Hello, this is Bryson Jack, and I have a uh, tutorial on how to make a chain that automatically uh, grows and rotates. Now this is um, basically a reverse engineer of the chain add-on, and if you're not familiar with that, let me just show you how that works. Um, if you go to your add-ons tab, and if you type in chain, Uh, you'll see right here it says object add chain. You can just check that and then hit save user settings. And it's like Brian Hinton is the person that made this. Anyway, um, so I needed to make a low poly chain. I guess I could just show you really quick what we're doing. So, and if I just hit the space bar and hit add chain here, it's pretty simple. There's three parts to this chain. There's the actual mesh of the link, and then there is a curve, and then there is a, a, a there is an empty right here. Okay. And so the way this works is if you select the the path, the NURBS path, and you go into edit mode. As you uh, as you drag this point here, you see that it grows and you can you know adjust it because it is a NURBS path so anyway I'm just going to show how to build one of these yourself um, in my circumstance I need to be able to make a low poly chain with low poly links because it's video game related and there just can't be a lot of polys in it and there as far as I know there's no way to uh, to you know to control how, how many polys are in this or whatever. So anyway, I just want to show everybody how to make their own if they, if you feel like that's something that you want to do. So I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to uh, hit new here and open up a new, uh, new scene. And I'll go ahead and delete the default, the default cube here. Oh, hit, hit tons of the wrong buttons. All right. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to create the chain link that you desire. So it, this is usually easiest by starting with a torus primitive. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to go to the mesh and I'm going to choose a torus. And I can either go to the torus settings here in the tool shelf, but I like to just hit F6 and then bring up the settings here. So since I'm making a low poly torus, um, I want to reduce this significantly and pretty much the lowest that I can go and, and have it look you know like a chain is six and then for the minor segments um, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose five because that's that's about as low as I, I can go there and have it still maintain some of its roundness and uh, if I uh, just hit smooth here okay now in edit mode what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the top view and I'm going to uh, go to vertex selection mode where it says limit selection to visible I could just go into wireframe but I'm gonna turn that off and uh, just drag a bounding box here and then just elongate my chain link so that's what it looks like. Turn that back on. And then I'm going to select my faces and hit Shift S and I'm going to do cursor to selected. That's just going to put the cursor in the middle. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt C and I'm going to change the origin of the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to hit Shift C to reset the 3D cursor back to the world origin. And then I'm going to hit uh, Shift S, and then return the selection back to the cursor. Okay, so now I've just created my low poly chain link that I want. All right, so now obviously your chain link can look like whatever it wants, whatever you want it to look like. It can be as high poly as you want. Um, now we're going to add some modifiers for the chain link. So I'm going to go to the modifier tab, and I'm going to add. A minimum of two here. There's an array modifier that I'm going to add, 
and then I'm going to add a curve modifier. Now you could also, in between the curve and the array modifier, you could add in a subdivision surface modifier as well. So, all right, so now that I've um, added the modifiers, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a NURBS path. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to go to Curves and I'm going to go to Path. Now I'm actually I'm going to back up here. I'm going to reselect this torus and we're not going to call it torus. We'll call it chain link. Sorry, I'm trying to type one-handed because I've got this microphone in front of my face here. <coughs> and then I usually like to just select that, hit Control C to copy, and then I come over and I name that data block as well. All right, so for the path, um, we can go ahead and rename that. And we you can rename it whatever you want. I could call it like chain length curve. Did I spell that right? Yep. And then select that, control C, paste that. And then we're also going to add an empty. So I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to go to Empty, and then Plane Axes. And then I'll go ahead and rename the empty. Um, we'll just call it Rotate Link. Since that is exactly what it does. All right. And um, now that we've got all those, uh, well, the last thing we need to do for the Rotate Link is right here in the in this object panel, um, we need to give it a rotation on the X. So go ahead and just stick 90 for 90 degree rotation. And I'll show you why that we do that here in a second. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, go back to the modifiers and set them up. So I'm going to select the chain link and go back to the modifiers. And what we want, since if you remember when we um, dragged that curve, the, the chain links were, were creating as it went. And so what you do for fit type is you choose fit curve. And that just means that the longer the curve is, the more pieces are created. Now for the curve, we're going to choose the curve that we created. And then for the relative offset, or what this means is uh, there's going to be uh, the, the next link that's going to be created, we want it to look like it's touching. Okay, so um, let's see, I could do like, let's see, 1.65. Let, uh, let me go into edit mode here and uh, just drag this out. <clears throat> 1.65 was the wrong value. Uh, I'm going to try like 0.65. So you can see that if I... Uh, if I move this, I'm going to hold down shift while I do it. You can see what's happening here is that there's an offset. By the way, I didn't need to drag that curve any bigger. I just, I was going the wrong direction in the offset. Anyway, but you can see right here what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it look like it's touching. So, you know, 0.68 is a good value for that. So we'll just leave it at that. And then for the object offset, this is where the rotation is going to come in. So we're going to select here and we're going to say rotate link. And so what that means is that every time it creates a new link, uh, it's going to rotate it by 90 degrees. So it rotates at 90 degrees here, then it rotates at 90 degrees here, and it's going to do that every single time. And then the last thing that we need to do is down here where the, the curve is. The curve is just necessary to be used with the array. For the object, we're going to select the curve again. Okay. So now we have our chain link set up. And all that you have to do in order to use this is to just select the path and go into edit mode. And then you can just uh, drag the, the path you know, wherever you want it. And as long as the path is long enough, it'll create another link. And so that's how it works. Anyway, I won't drag this out too much longer, but if you were curious how to make your own chain in an automated sort of way, that is one way to do it. And I hope this helped you in um, your modeling and uh, have a great day.